frequently asked questions, like kind property. This is a concept when we deal with real property that there are lots of questions on. What is considered like kind property? Simply put, when dealing with real property, it's any real property held for productive use in a trade or business or for investment exchange for any other real property held for productive use in a trade or business or for investment. So on the screen, you're seeing images of different types of real property. There is sometimes a misconception that a taxpayer has to exchange land for other land or a single family rental for a single family rental. And that's not accurate. Like kind real property is very, very broad. So you'll see on the screen, you can exchange out of bare land and go into an apartment building, into an office building, into a single family rental, into a vacation home held for investment purposes. There are lots of different types of real property assets that are considered like kind property. Now when we're dealing with real property, there are two types of properties that are excluded. The first one is the taxpayer's principal residence, the house that they live in. That is not like kind because it's a property they live in. It's not held for investment purposes. The other type of real property that is excluded is property that is being held for sale or dealer property. So if the intent is to acquire property and hold it for sale, that's excluded from Section 1031 tax deferral. Any other property, any real property that is held for investment or business purposes can be exchanged for any other real property held the same way. And it's beyond the scope of this segment, but you really want to look at state law. The types of real property that can qualify can be very, very broad. It can include things like transferable development rights, what are considered air rights. In certain states, water rights might be considered real property. So there's a very long list of creative exchange variations that are considered real property. The personal property component, now this is something where a taxpayer has to acquire either like class personal property or other personal property that falls under the same North American Standard Industrial Classification Code. So with personal property, the main concept is it's much more limited and restrictive. If a taxpayer has a, an aircraft used in their business, they can exchange that for another aircraft, but it has to be very similar. Uh, rental cars can be exchanged for other rental cars. So the personal property rules are much more narrow and specific. The real property rules are very broad and comprehensive. Very big difference. And then finally, keep in mind, some property sales might include both real property and personal property. So a taxpayer who maybe sells a larger hotel has real property that's part of the sales price. And that could also include significant personal property. Maybe they've got a restaurant down there that on the bottom level that has stoves and ovens and equipment. And each of the hotel rooms might have personal property if they've got refrigerators and microwaves and things of that nature. So it's important in that sort of a transaction to allocate between the real property component and then the personal property component. So a taxpayer would work with their tax and legal advisors to accomplish that. To review your specific 1031 exchange situation, contact Asset Preservation's headquarters in California at 800-282-1031 or our Eastern Regional Office in New York at 866-394-1031. Please read the full disclaimer as Asset Preservation cannot provide tax or legal advice.